What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to some more Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on LLB The Show 19. And today we got the July recap video and as well as the trade deadline special, which will be towards the end of the video. We'll get to that after we do all the normal uh, recap video stuff, league leaders, stat standings, injuries, all that good stuff. And uh, last video I asked you guys, you know, let me know in the comments if you thought if we were buyers or sellers at the deadline because we were three games over 500. We are still three games over 500, 55 and 52. Uh, the majority consensus was that we were sellers. I tend to agree with you guys there. So we are going to make a few deals, uh, but we're not tanking. We're not going to completely sell the team because we are still in a wild card race. So let's get to the standings and stuff now. As we are fourth in the NL Central, which is not very ideal. And we are 13 games back. So it's not looking like we're going to be winning the division, especially with two teams ahead of us who are also going for wild cards. So, I mean, the division title is pretty much out of reach unless we get a miracle. So the wild card is the way we're going to get to the postseason. And we are six games back, which is not good either. But there are two months left of the season. Crazier things have happened. But like I said, two of the teams ahead of us are in our division. So we're going to have to play them a lot. And we haven't had the best of luck in the division this season. So we do have our hands full. So technically, I think we are, like I said, sellers at the deadline. But we're not out of this thing six games back. You know, so we're not going to sell the entire farm and blow it up. But I think we can make a couple deals that could bring in some prospects that won't hurt our team too much. Um, that I think we'll make the deals. And like I said, we'll get into that here in a little bit later on in the video. But it's going to be a tough task either way because the Cardinals, Cubs, you know, Dodgers are a really good team. Phillies are a really good team. And I don't know, but we're going to just ride this thing out. We're not going to give up. Um, we'll see what happens, but, you know, it's not promising. We'll just go with that. So let's take a look at the league leaders. And Josh Bell currently tied fourth in doubles with 26 on the season. He's continuing to have a very nice season. Corey Dickerson right behind him there, seventh with 25. He continues to have a... Pretty hot season. An average dipped a little bit, but he's still getting them uh, extra base hits. And then Kevin Newman, 10th in triples. Again, he's on the team pretty much for his defense. But he's starting to swing bat a little bit better. And then Corey Dickerson, Starlin Marte, also make the list with four triples. Go to home runs. Young Hogong, still up there, 24. He has not hit much. He only has like two home runs this whole month, but he's still hitting about what he's been hitting most of the year, so he's still doing productive, just kind of been quieter. And then Dickerson in the RBI, 70 RBIs on the season, good for 11th in the NL, just holding steady in that cleanup spot for us. On to stolen bases. Marte has lost the top spot ender in CRT past him. Still good for second with 17. As he's quietly having a good season as well. And then Kevin Newman coming out of nowhere. 12 swipes now. Stole like five or six bases just this last month. Coming on there. And Young Ho Gong slugging percentage still on that top 13 list. Slugging 551. On to pitchers tie on. 13 wins. Good for third. In the NL as he continues to have a pretty good season. And then our all-star closer, Felipe Vasquez. Fourth and saves with 31. And then Nick Kingham. Fourth in the ERA at 286. Our number five starter. Easily the quiet, underrated pitcher of the year for us. Trevor Williams, though, finds himself on the list as well. 3-2-0 ERA, 13 in the NL. Our pitching staff as a whole, aside from 
maybe Musgrove is are really really doing the thing this year. Jameson Tyon strikeouts 129. Good for fifth place. Also, innings pitched is good for fifth. 139. So he's keeping his strikeouts right about the same as his innings pitched. And then Nick Kingham still up there in whip. 1-2-2 two, two, good for 10th. So let's take a look at the player stats a little more in depth. Trying to go, go over everyone on the main roster. Tyon, 363 ERA. Archer has been playing pretty well these last few starts. Got his ERA down to 320. 85 strikeouts over 76 innings. I like to see that. Trevor Williams, 320 ERA again. You know, surprisingly, 9 and 7. Don't really care about wins, but it, it is good to see him with a winning record at least. Musgrove got the ERA over 5 still. We don't really care to see that. And Kingham. 103 strikeouts, 286. He's having a very good season for us, quietly. And uh, I'd love to see that. And Liriano, like I said, he's he's probably going to be gone. By the end of this video, we're either trading him or he's getting cut, DFA'd, because we're just not going to deal with him anymore. Uh, we're going to bring up Tyler Lyons, a lefty out of AAA, who was injured and for some reason never had him on the ball club. But he's a lot better. It's like a 77 overall. But the rest of the bullpen, they're pretty good. They're holding fort. I think if we're going to trade some guys for some prospects, we could use a couple of these guys because we could trade away one or two of them, and that could net us a decent prospect because everyone needs bullpen help if you're a playoff team. So on to the batters. batters. Starlin Marte, 277, 11 homers, 44 rubies. Average dipping a little bit, but still holding for it pretty good. Polanco, 244. Average is creeping up a little bit. Gong, 283. 24 and 61. I mean, for him, I, I'm happy with that. 296 for Dickerson, 15 and 70. It's kind of average is dipping down a little under 300, but you know, he's a guy that could possibly be traded because he is final year of his contract. Uh, I, uh, if the deal ain't right, I won't do it because I could just try to re-sign him. But if we can get something for him, we, we might have to might deal with him because he is kind of cooling off a little bit. And then we don't want to get stuck with him and then and just completely cool off and we get nothing for him in return. But we'll deal with that here in a little bit in the video. Kevin Kramer is not doing well for us. So hopefully we might start try something new. Maybe move Colin Moran in there. Move Newman back to second and Gong to short. I don't know. We'll figure something out. But we might, we're might. we going to give Kramer a little more time. Try to. It's not a big sample size of at bats there. So we'll give him a little more time. But we're not going to wait forever. If you don't hit, uh, we're going to try something new. The bench is doing what they've done all year. They're hitting pretty good when they're called upon. No complaints from them. So on to injuries. Adam Frazier still has about, you know, three or four weeks left on the DL before we get him back, which then we won't need Kramer anyway. But the rest of the guys that are going to be coming off the DL here in the next few days, Cervelli actually comes off after I sim through the deadline. So he is back in the lineup when we play in the next gameplay episode. He'll be back in the lineup. Keller as well comes off here in a few days. And Kivalon. I don't know if I said his name right. But all those guys are going to be coming off here in the next few days. So on to the trades. Here's the first one we made. Corey Dickerson, I mentioned earlier. So I threw Dickerson out there to see what we could get for him. And I, it was not too much. So I went ahead and included Edgar Santana, the reliever. Very good reliever for us. And the Indians offered us this trade. Nolan Jones, a potential 20-year-old kid, 6'4 overall, third baseman, 6'4, 185-pound kid. Already major league ready defensively and in the power. Use a little, needs a little plate work and contact would be a little better, but 
20 years old, that's all going to get better. So, I mean, we kind of have to do it. Like, he's a top prospect. He's 20 years old. I know our top prospect, Brian Hayes, is a third baseman. But we can always move one of them to first base when the time is right. Uh, Hayes is about a year away from being on the major league club anyway. So maybe Jones goes the first when he is ready. But, I mean, it was a deal that we had to make. Like, like I said, giving up Santana doesn't hurt us too bad because we do have plenty of bullpen help. And Dickerson, there's no guarantee we could have re-signed him. So I think it was a no-brainer trade. Um, we So we went ahead and pulled the trigger on it. And then the other trade, which we wanted to try to trade Liriano. I put him in, and no one really wanted him. So I added him and Travis... Swaggerly, center fielder who obviously we don't need. Pretty decent center field prospect, but we don't need him because we have Marte's locked up for like six years. He's not going anywhere. So we threw him in there with Liriano, and the A's offered us Jorge Mateo, 23 years old, B potential, 71 overall. I mean, I felt bad because I thought I was still kind of ripping him off. So I threw in another outfielder, Calvin Mitchell, B potential. Well, actually, he's a C potential outfield prospect, but he is only 20 years old, so he can get better. But Jorge Mateo, MLB ready pretty much for the most part. He's never going to be the best hitter, but he's a good defensive shortstop. He could help us right now. But I think we're going to start him in AAA. And, I mean, he could be up this year. Or he could be our starting shortstop next year. But I looked at our shortstop depth. And Cole Tucker, yeah, he is our top prospect at that position. But he's already the same age as Mateo and nowhere near ready. So I felt like we had to make this trade. So those are the two trades we ended up making at the deadline. Uh, Let me know down in the comments what you thought of them. I thought they were good for what I was trying to do, which was get some pieces, but still stay competitive and try to make a shot at a wild card, which I think we did. I think we got two key pieces for this team going forward. I don't know. Let me know your opinions down in the comments on the moves at the deadline. If you want to enjoy, guys, smash that like button down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time. Peace.